Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial of Plexus. So today I'm gonna talk about pile calculation in Plexus and especially pile driving in Plexus. But before I start, if you're interested in engineering and geotechnical work, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It will be a great help for you. So this is the pile driving situation. There's the machine where they drive the pile by beating the pile from up to down. They drive it in the soil. The force due to the machine will create a dynamic load on the pile, which will create an excess pore pressure uh, due to the quick stress increase around the pile. So in order to simulate this process, we will model the soil, the sand layer, uh, as hardening soil. So if you're new to the hardening soil situation, I've already talked about it in other tutorials. You can check it on my YouTube channel. So before I start with all this geometry, this uh, this tutorial is a little bit advanced. So I I advise you if you're new to this uh, to Plexus to watch my old videos, which are for beginners. This example will take in cons consideration a pile of 11 meter. High, uh, high and 0.4 meter thick it will be derived through a clay layer till a sand layer this is the new project we'll create a new project and create a new model we'll define the stratigraphy you can see it here this is the stratigraphy this is the borehole you can see that there's two level there's a clay level and the sand level so then these are the materials the clay will be modeled as more coulomb and the pile linear elastic and uh, this uh, the sand it will be modeled as a hardening soil so this is the sand layer hardening soil undrained a undrained a these are the parameters you see here i will I'll go to material and I will edit the clay. We can see it's more Coulomb, undrained B, undrained or short term material behavior and stiffness is different in term of effective properties. I've also talked about this in other tutorials. Here are the properties. Here are the properties also. <coughs> we can see that the pile was modeled as a linear elastic and non porous material, which represents the concrete because it's a concrete pile. <clears throat> here we can see the sand this is the sand layer it's modeled as hardening soil since it will be subject to a dynamic load and like this we've defined our materials so now we'll go to the structure by the way i will leave a copy of this pdf in the description box so you can download it and follow every step i'll do the pile is defined as a column of 0 0.2 meter width which is half of the pile since we'll be drawing half of our structure <coughs> so this is the pile this is the interface it will be extended and we'll create a load so let us see what we've done this is the pile we've extended our interface to this point here we can see that we've added a line load so this line load we've set it here to minus one it doesn't matter because we'll not use it in the calculation we want to use the dynamic multiplier which is here this is the harmonic signal which is 5000 the amplitude and 50 hertz the frequency we can find the force here this force uh, represent the pile driving machine it represent each and every uh, tap that will be done on the top of the pile the pile will be hit by a large machine which is this one here this will be 
a concrete or a metal uh, metal device that will hit the head of the pile. So we can see the geometry and then the mesh. We've generated the mesh. This is the geometry. A line load will be done all over the pile here. This is the dynamic multiplier. This is the harmonic signal. Here we've created a mesh. We can see the mesh. So as you can see the mesh is coursing next to uh, the interface so the interface here is very important since all our calculation are connected to the interface uh, we've given it a virtual sickness of one apply uh, thanks reduction because every dynamic force will be transmitted directly to the interface and we'll have a failure here of the interface the flow of condition we've changed nothing we'll go to stage construction so this is the initial phase we've used k0 procedure since we have uh, since we have no uh, geometry that require a gravity calculation this is phase one in phase one we've turned on the pile in phase two we've turned on the dynamic load as you can see we've turned on only the dynamic load and not the line load since we will be not using the line load phase three we've turned off the dynamic load to see the vibration caused by the dynamic load as you can see phase one is a plastic calculation Phase 2 is a dynamic calculation and phase 3 also a dynamic calculation. This is the dynamic time interval. You can find all the details of the phases here in the PDF. So let us now check the results. We view the results of the calculation to see the effect of the force on the pile you can see first of all the total displacement in phase one in phase zero there will be no displacement in phase one there will be the creation of the pile in phase two you can see the displacement here due to the dynamic force which is equal to five times ten minus three at this node here And this is the phase 3 which is the final displacement here you can see the plastic point history these are the plastic points which are around the pile on the interface these plastic points are generated from the dynamic load which is uh, applied on the pile now I'll go to graph and create a new curve here I will put time not any time the dynamic time here I'll go to node 215 which is at the end of the pile and put total displacement and press on ok so here we can see from time 0 how the displacement will evolve and get smaller then get bigger then smaller then bigger until it it will be a constant value after a certain amount of time which uh, the dynamic force will be removed it will be here so this is the highest point here it's very important also to note something that the dynamic time interval here was set to 0.1 here to 0.19 so as you can see that after 0.01 the time steps uh, 
I will not save this chart for now. So this is it for this tutorial. If you have any question, just leave them in the comment section. And stay tuned for other tutorials like this one. Thanks for watching.